North Star and Lord of the Isles were the only surviving mainline locomotives from the broad gauge era of the Great Western Railway. Yet both of them were scrapped in 1906. Many myths have grown up around this event. That the pair was scrapped when George Jackson Churchward was away on his holidays, or carried out at the request of William Stanier, father of the engineer William Stanier, who then had a senior position in the stores department at Swindon. Equally, the Science Museum in London has been blamed for not accepting the donation of one or both locomotives. But the truth, as ever, is more complicated and far less scandalous. The idea of preserving a broad gauge locomotive goes back as far as 1874, when William Dean of the Great Western Railway entered into a gentleman's agreement with the South Kensington Museum a precursor to the Science Museum, to do just that. The matter was then left in abeyance until 1892, when the broad gauge came to an end. The museum expressed a desire to preserve a broad gauge locomotive and expressed a preference for the North Star, but negotiations petered out. The correspondence between the Great Western Railway and the museum is not clear on the point, but it appears that it was agreed that North Star was to be presented to the museum, but could not be received by them because of lack of space. It was assumed by the museum that it would stay stored at Swindon until such time as a new building was available. However, William Dean retired in 1902, and this agreement appears to have been forgotten by then. Churchwood took up the top job at Swindon, and in the following year, clearly unaware of the existing agreement between Dean and the museum, the Great Western Railway Locomotive Carriage and Stores Committee record. 22nd of January 1903, minute 19, Mr Churchwood reported that the old broad gauge engines, Lord of the Isles and the North Star, had for many years been stored in a shed at Swindon, and that the space occupied by them is much needed. Having regard to the interest attaching to the two engines, the committee consider that they might, with advantage, be offered to the South Kensington Museum, and they agreed to recommend that an endeavour be made to dispose of them in this manner. So negotiations reopened with the museum. However, South Kensington replied that they could still not accept either locomotive due to lack of space, saying that it was hoped that they may have a new building in about five years' time. Sadly, this took far longer than expected, with work starting in 1913 and not being completed until 1922. The museum, perhaps naively, assumed that both locomotives would be kept safe at Swindon until the offer could be accepted, and in fact were surprised that both locomotives had been cut up. Having been rebuffed by South Kensington, the pair of locomotives were also offered to Mason's College in Birmingham and to the Swindon Technical Committee, but both of them declined, probably due to lack of space. So... On the 21st of December 1905, the Great Western Locomotive Carriage and Stores Committee minutes report that the locomotive superintendent reported that the old broad gauge engines North Star and Lord of the Isles, which occupy much valuable space in the shops at Swindon, have been offered to several institutions without success, and upon his recommendation, the committee approved of the same being broken up. A furious railway magazine reported in March 1906 that the Lord of the Isles was then in the course of being broken up. It fumed that the Great Western could have taken a leaf out of the Furness Railway, which had preserved Copper Knob under a glass and iron gazebo, or the North Eastern, which had displayed locomotion and Derwent on plinths in Darlington. It also thought that the enthusiast community could have been let known about the scrapping and they could have rallied round to raise funds to save one or both engines. 
Furthermore, the magazine also thought that Lord of the Isles could have been displayed at the Alexandra Palace. It further reported that components of both engines were being sold to railway enthusiasts and souvenir hunters not just around the country, but around the globe, and that Lord of the Isles horsehair stuffed buffers were, quote, being converted into music stools. And so ended the careers of North Star and Lord of the Isles. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Victims of a failed early preservation attempt. I hope you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, please leave a comment below, as well as like, share and subscribe. Thanks to my patrons, including Station Master Tier patrons Gian Roberto Lauri, Joshua Anderson and Matthew K. I would also like to thank John Liffen, Curator Emeritus at the Science Museum, for helping make this video possible. And I look forward to seeing you all next time on Rail Story.